All right, what's up guys? This is Kitchen Confidence and tonight I am making char siu pork in my instant pot and I'm gonna do some ajits. I don't know if I actually don't even know how to say it. Um, the marinated eggs for the ramen and I am going to make a uh, cook some ramen noodles with uh, a shoyu broth. Now where I am now here in Idaho it's kind of hard to get the supplies needed to do this properly and um, so one second so um, I am kind of having to uh, make do with what I have so right now the um, the pork belly I bought some pork belly to make the char siu pork with which worked perfectly fine the ramen uh, the eggs that was perfectly fine got all the ingredients for that for making the show you it was a little bit harder and um, I wanted to make it from scratch make the broth and everything like that but getting the ingredients for that proved to be a little more difficult but uh, I have um, Hey, thank you for the host. Um, I can't say your name. <laughs> but uh, I appreciate it. Thank you for the host. Um, so it's been uh, a bit of a challenge to get the ingredients to make the broth and make it from scratch like how I had wanted. So I, I did find a prepackaged ramen, uh, the noodles, fresh noodles, and they came with ramen um, shoyu packets. So that's what I'm going to be working with. But everything else I'm going to be making from scratch. So um, let's see here. I've got just a couple of ingredients that we're going to be using to start off with. And um, so what we want to do is the the recipe that I, I'm... Basing the char siu off of is one that involves, well, you cook it in the Instant Pot for 90 minutes. And I didn't like the way it turned out, but I'm also lear still learning how to use my Instant Pot. So I'm tweaking it a little bit, changing the way I'm doing it. But um, the first thing that I'm going to want to do is make the, the uh, eggs, the marinated eggs, and get that going first so that they can sit and marinate while everything else is cooking. So what I'm actually going to do um, really quick, I'll just show you what we're working with. Um, the egg, pretty basic, easy recipe, actually. So for the egg, it's going to be five tablespoons of sake four tablespoons of mirin, and then three tablespoons of soy sauce. But I am going to add a little bit of brown sugar to that um, just to sweeten it up a little bit because the last time I made this, it didn't, it didn't have, um, it didn't have enough sweetness to it. So that's what I'm going to do here. So we're just going to go quickly over to the stove and... I'm just going to, whoa, hey, sushi day, thank you guys so much for the raid, um, I don't know why I can't hear anything, um, friggin crazy, what's up everybody, it was awesome hanging out with you guys, and now you guys are hanging out with me, awesome, uh, really appreciate it, Allison, son, you guys are awesome, I wish I got to listen to Sun in his little, uh, let's say, looser tongue, I guess. He was going off about tongues an awful lot. Um, but uh, yeah, thanks for the raid, you guys. I really appreciate it. Um, I don't know why my sounds aren't working. Oh, wait a minute. 
Yeah, that's right. I can't hear any of the sounds because... Uh, hey, what's up, Stinky? What's going on, man? I just realized I'm not going to be able to hear the alerts because I have my... My mic is plugged into my Mac. And... And, um... Because of that, the audio isn't playing on my... On my, um... On my Mac. I'm... I just screwed everything up real right now. Hey, Koala, thank you for the bit. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to go. <laughs> the, it's the first bit in a long time, so thank you very much. Um, let's see, let's get back to it. Okay, so I'm going to just bring you guys over real quick, really ghetto style, because I'm still trying to get a better setup for this kitchen and... Um, Nice, now I've just noticed I have a knot in my cord. So I'm just going to bring you guys over here real quick while I start the marinade for the, for the eggs. And it's really simple, really easy. And we're just going to start with that first because I want to get that marinating and give it as much time to sit and marinate as possible while we do the rest of the cooking. Yes, I used to be in Portland. Um, I think I think we had this discussion. Hey, bastard! Thank you for the bits. Awesome. Thank you very much. Every bit counts. Um, Tig Girl, I think we had this conversation on Instagram. <laughs> um, what is going on? I can't. Hey, thank you for the follow. I can't really see much of what's going on in the chat. I can't hear the my alerts, so I really do apologize. All right, so real quick, I'm going to get a measuring spoon. And so the first thing I'm going to need is five tablespoons of sake. Oh, is it? Okay. So five tablespoons of sake. Really easy. Three, four, and... Five. All right, we've got five tablespoons right there. And then four tablespoons of mirin. Such a noob, I forgot to prepare everything. So I've got uh, to unwrap stuff and be so unprofessional. Okay. So we got five tablespoons of sake in the pan. You could do this in a pot. I'm doing it in a pan because I'm using a lot of uh, pots and pans for doing this. And so I'm trying to, I'm making a mess <laughs> is what it is. I'm going to end up having all of my kitchen, uh, pots and pans in the sink at the end of the night. All right, that's four tablespoons of mirin. And then we're gonna let this cook for about two minutes. We'll uh, let it come to a boil and then we'll cook that for two minutes. How did that lamb come out? I didn't, um, I didn't catch that. When you guys finished up that lamb, I saw you pull it out of the oven, had some really nice color to it, and you, then you guys sat down, and then um, I started doing this, so I didn't really catch that. Okay, so we've got those two right there. And then it just needs to come up to a boil. 
Oh, one other thing that I'm going to adjust with this recipe just to try it out is I've got some I've got some uh, kombu that I'm going to add into this and then let that give a little bit of a little bit of its little seaweedy flavor to this so it's dried dried uh, kelp uh, I don't think I'm gonna need much for this so I'm just gonna add no I'll just add these three pieces and then we're gonna set that aside so once this comes up, I'm going to let it boil for about two minutes or so. And it'll go real quick, especially in this pan. When it starts to do that, I'm going to add just a little bit of, a little bit of brown sugar. Just a little bit, maybe a teaspoon or so and that's gonna give it a little bit of sweetness so because when I did this the first time it wasn't as sweet as I had wanted it so I'm just adjusting this as I go right now all right, that's bubbling. We'll add a little timer. Two minutes. I already smell a lot of the, uh, the sake right now. So that's just going to cook down for two minutes. Back here, um, you guys can't see it, but in the back, I've got a pot of water. I'm going to start heating that up because what I'm going to do is once once I get to the char siu, I'm going to first uh, blanch it for about 10 minutes and then I'm gonna take it out and then throw it into the instapot with the with the ingredients that are gonna have it that it's gonna sit and braise in Hopefully the Instapot's going to, I'm going to have it work out better than last time. I'm going to do a little bit differently than I did last time. So we'll see how well that works out. Just, this, we're under a minute here. And I'm going to add three tablespoons of soy sauce hope you guys can see everything okay move this out of the way there smells really good all right we've got 15 seconds on here thank you guys for coming and hanging out um, I've been away for a while. We moved from Oregon to Texas and then Texas to Idaho. So that's where we are right now. And I just recently got back on to streaming. This is the second stream I've done. So I'm still getting used to this kitchen, trying to figure it out. But, um, you know. We'll get there. Yeah, it was uh, quite the adventure. Texas was awesome except for the humidity. That is the main reason why we left. All right, three tablespoons here of soy sauce. And I'm using low sodium soy sauce. You can use regular soy sauce if you want, but We've been uh, trying to be a little bit more healthier, so 
low sodium. Okay, so now that we've got that, I'm supposed to take this off of the heat and let it cool down. So I'm just going to stack this on my back burner here. Let it start to cool down because what I'm going to do now with my my this pot <laughs> I'm going to fill this up with water. We're going to boil um, I guess only two eggs. Well, I'll do four just in case. So yeah, we've uh, gotten ourselves into this apartment here. It's different than the kitchen you guys have seen me in. Different than uh, all my YouTube videos. So we're getting adjusted to this kitchen, this house, I mean this apartment. So it's presenting, you know, a little bit of differences, a little bit of challenges. But, you know, we'll get it all sorted out. Okay, so got a pot of water going for that because what what uh, I want to do now is get those eggs marinating as soon as possible as soon as we get that going once the eggs are done um, I'm gonna take a really easy let's take one of these sandwich bags gonna pour the marinade in here and then drop the eggs in there I'm gonna cook the eggs for about um, five six minutes um, because I don't have an ice maker and so I would cook it till about seven seven eight minutes and then put it in an ice bath I don't have an I I don't have a way to make an ice bath right now so I'm cooking it a little under letting it carry over a little bit and then let it sit in the marinade and soak that up so um, I'm just having to adjust a little bit, but it's going to work out because it'll still have that nice runny um, yolk in the center. With the marinade, it's going to bring a lot of flavor to it, and it's going to be really good. Hopefully, it'll be a little bit sweeter. Yeah, it was a great adventure. Um, I, I personally never thought I would see those parts of America. I never thought that I would... I'd have a, I didn't ever have an interest in seeing, like from Texas, we went, from Texas we went north, so we went through Oklahoma, I had never been there before, went through Colorado, never been there before, Wyoming, never been there before, Montana, never been, through, been there before, so in four days, we drove through all of that, and um, it was really fun, uh, really opened my eyes to just how, how big you know the US is I've, I've only seen half of it if if I would see Arizona and New Mexico the whole west um, I guess west coast and from Texas west I'd I'd be in have been in every one of those states which is kinda cool but yeah it was really awesome really enjoyed it let's see this I'll let that cool a little bit the marinade I could stick it into the oven but um, I mean stick it into the into the freezer but the pan is still hot I don't have anything to set it in that'll I actually could just put it into a bowl and then let it cool down that way so maybe let's do that oh yes yeah New Mexico <laughs> We're, uh, we were in New Mexico. <laughs> yes, we were. Um, for those that don't know, WifeBot is my wife. <laughs> and um, yes, we, we went through New Mexico. I forgot about that. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I'm just going to try to cool this down a little bit quicker. So I'm going to pour this. Actually, going to strain this so I can... Um, and strain this into the bowl because we don't want to get that um, we don't want to get the kombu in there and really I didn't make much you don't need much for this 
because what you're going to do is, I'm done with this, let's get some space in the sink, I mean on the stove, you're only making enough to coat the egg and um, you're going to be moving it around and periodically move it around so that way it's going to coat every part of the egg. So, yeah, uh, we've got our water boiling here. I'm gonna grab four eggs. And I've worked with people who would take the eggs out and pour them into a bowl of water, of room temperature water, and let them sit so that they could come up to temperature. And that, you know, that helps with uh, helps with the with the temperature difference that's tends to be uh, what a lot of people say will break the shells will break because of the temperature difference so I've worked with a lot of people that will take the eggs out ahead of time set them in some room temperature water so that it can come up to room temperature and then they'll drop it in if that's what you want to do that's fine I've never done that if the egg cracks while it's um, while it's in there boiling, that's, I mean, it's not going to end my night. It's just going to look a little bit different. But um, as I learned how to do this with the eggs, the marinated eggs, I learned a neat little trick that I didn't know before about um, taking these eggs and when you have them in the water, what you're going to want to do is keep them moving. If you keep them moving while they're cooking, you're going to center the yolks in the middle of the egg. I didn't know that. So when I did that, uh, when I did, when I cooked these the first time, I did that and I was like, oh, look, it's right there and where it should be. It's not in some wonky little position. So that was pretty cool. And I learned something new with that. So if you didn't know that, you know that now. Kitchen confidence. Okay. Whoop, let's move a little bit higher. Okay, this water is boiling. So I've got chopsticks so I can move these eggs around. I'm going to drop the eggs in as gently as I can and as quickly as I can because I've got four eggs and then I want to set the timer. If they crack, they crack. If he dies, he dies. All right, that's two, three, and four. All right, setting my timer here for, we'll go seven minutes and then, you know what, I'll just use this since I've just used it. So now I'm just going to stand here and move them about and I'm guessing that as you move them, you know, because the outside is going to cook first, it's going to start to move the yolk towards the center, towards the most, um, the last part to get cooked and you're going to end up with that beautiful yolk right in the middle perfect for presentation so this is boiling away just keep this moving and I'm going to take this to the sink and get some cold water on it and for me in my experience, it's a lot easier to peel eggs when they're still warm. The shells will come off a lot easier. So that's what I'm going to do really quick once I have these done in six minutes. I've got my pot in the back ready to blanch the pork, ro uh, pork belly. And with the pork belly, so with the Instapot recipe that I found, you set your Instapot on manual and set it to high pressure, cook it for an hour and a half. This Instapot that I have does not have a way that I can find 
right now to set the pressure to low or high. There's no uh, clear way to to change the setting. So I'm going to try to do it on a meat slash stew setting and um, hopefully that will give me the results that I'm looking for. And also I'm going to trim off the fat, most of the fat, on the pork belly just because the first time I'd done this a lot of the fat didn't cook off it didn't render down didn't cook off so we had a big slab of the fat still on there so I'm just gonna take that little extra step to to make it a nicer cut once it's done because with this pork belly what we're gonna do is roll it up into a cylinder and then tie it so I've got some butcher's twine and then all I'm gonna do is tie it up real quick and um, and then tie it up real quick good and tight and then we'll drop it into the instapot with the rest of the ingredients to cook in marinated eggs you'll do miso mar marinade sometimes yeah you know the other thing I wanted to try to do for ramen was also marinated bamboo, bamboo shoots, which we had, and um, a lot of the ramen places that I've gone to, I don't think they've, they've served that in their ramen. So we went to a place that did have it, and it was really, really good. So I was just like, well, you know what? This is just another thing that we're just going to have to have in our ramen now, and since there is not a a lot of options when it comes to ramen here in Idaho, <laughs> um, I am going to just make it myself so that we can have it. So yeah, this is um, it's all a learning experience for me right now. It's trying to get this Instapot, um, trying to learn it. And I'll tell you guys this, that most of the stuff that you see me do on stream, I'm doing for the first time um, like this. This I've done once before this exact recipe, but most, most of the time I come up with an idea and say, that sounds like fun, and I'll just do it on stream. Um, because I have a a formal background in cooking, I just go off of that training that I have to get the results that I want. So that's basically what I'm doing. And along the way, just try to help people learn how to cook and do some more cooking in their kitchens. So we got three minutes here. Then moving this constantly I've got the marinade sitting in the freezer, so all of this should be coming together pretty well. This pot in the back here is on a low boil. I think our marinade is going to be perfectly ready. Bowl is cold. Marinade looks like it's uh, thickening up a little bit, so that means it's cooling down. So, yeah. Thank you so much, everybody, for step stopping in. I'm uh, glad to have you guys here. And I know it's been a while. I've jumped on Twitch when I could, and, you know, a lot of you guys were really cool about, um, you know, asking me when I'd be back, and, you know, it's been a while, and caught up with some of you guys, which is awesome. And um, going forward going to be doing a lot more streaming. Throw some food together, Stinky. Let me know what you got. All right. We're down to our last minute. So once this comes off, I'm going to go over to the sink. And then uh, I'm just going to pour some water. Hot. <laughs> Get some cold water in here. And then... Uh, Probably bring it back to the stove um, so that I can just show you real quick the peeling and then dropping it into the bag. Very exciting stuff. 
I know. But, um, yeah, when I'm not streaming or anything, you can find what I'm, find the stuff I'm cooking. You'll find it on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook. Uh, Twitch is a nice, fun way to just expre express, uh, express myself <laughs> in the kitchen. All right, let's take this off. Okay, I've got wires. Uh, I'm attached to wires here, so I gotta remember not to turn the wrong way and not to trip over the wire because I will pull my Mac down. Nothing fancy here. All I'm doing is getting cold water into the pot, dumping it out, and then putting more cold water. Because once that water hits these eggs, they're going to start to warm up a little bit. I don't have ice, so I'm doing it this way. And it's going to be fine. Because when you do let the eggs marinate for long enough, they will start to kind of gelatinize or gel gelatinize? I don't know what the word would be. But, um... Let's see, how can I do this? Boop. All right. Uh, that's not a good shot, but... Uh, why am I mixing it? Are you talking about why was I um, moving the eggs around? If you're new to cooking, you came to the right place. Because I'm all about teaching people how to cook. So, any questions you've got just go ahead and ask so the really quick so when uh, with this recipe the eggs the reason I was swirling them around and everything is for the presentation of the eggs you want the yolks in the center of the eggs if I let them just sit in the pot and boil the yolk would settle to the bottom of the pot in the egg and when it would cook, it would just be right there. Thank you for the follow. I really appreciate that. Um, so with moving the egg, as I'm moving it, the egg is cooking. So the outside of the egg is going to keep cooking, which is going to kind of push the yolk into the center. And then when it all cooks, that yolk is going to be in the center of the egg and so that's basically why it's it makes the egg look nicer when you cut it in half and you want to present that it's going to be right there in the center of the egg so that's that's the reason why I did that yeah no problem okay so I don't know if you guys can see so the eggs just they're still warm so all I'm gonna do is crack and carefully, as carefully as I can, just peel it off. For me, it's easier when they're hot. The shell will separate a lot easier from the egg. So that's all I'm doing. Just carefully and gently, you want to just work your way around the, the egg. And um, have I ever made Parmesan crusted chicken? Yep, I've made that several times. I haven't done that on stream yet, but I could do that on stream. So this egg is not cooked hard boiled. It's still soft. See, it's got some squishiness to it. It's, it's probably more than medium just by the feel of it, but that's what you want when you're doing this. So where did my little bag go? I had my little bag... Okay, so I've got this bag. I'm just going to put the egg in there. And we'll do the same with the rest of these. Parmesan crusted chicken. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I was thinking uh, chicken parmesan. Is that what you mean? Chicken parmesan is a really nice dish to do, easy. And um, yeah, it's a nice filling hearty meal 
I think a lot of people will like it. Where I worked before, that was a very popular item. And, um, yeah, it's, I haven't, I haven't done that on stream. Maybe I should. So one thing about me, though, is that I am lactose intolerant. <laughs> so I kind of avoid cheese and dairy. Um, but I love ice cream. And in Texas, I came across the greatest ice cream ever, Bluebell ice cream, which before, um, in Oregon, there is Tillamook ice cream, but it, I think it's just in the Pacific Northwest. Um, I used to believe that was the greatest ice cream, but Bluebell completely blows it away. I never thought I would say that, but it's true. It's damn true. So this one is sticking a little bit, so I'm losing some of the egg. But it's alright. It's not like we're not going to eat it. Might not look perfect, but it's going to taste perfect. So the longer it sits here, the harder it's going to get to peel. And it's a little... A little bit of the time sitting here is what's doing it. But I got it as best as I could. Still pretty much egg shaped. And then here's our last one. Sorry if that's loud. So I've seen in um, a lot of ramen shops, they'll uh, they have a hole puncher for the eggs so it creates a space between the shell and the egg and then I guess the the water gets between it and cooks it which um, I want one <laughs> but uh, I don't have one so maybe I will get one if I'm gonna make more ramen I think I'm a I think I will maybe get one <laughs> Tell them a girl, but we'll have to try the bluebell. The problem is you have to order it. Yes, and like Wifebot said, it was the craziest thing to not see Derigold or Tillamook and um it was it was just odd because that had just been normal. That had just been the thing. And to not see any of that and not have that around was kind of very, very odd. Okay, that pot is done. Okay, now carefully, as carefully as I can, I will take this marinade. Doesn't seem like it's going to be much, but I'm going to pour this right into here. And we're going to let that marinade in the fridge. So just like that, that's it. Now I'm just going to, occasionally I'm going to move this around so I can get it, um, get it coated evenly. I got some of the air out there and then we're just going to do this and, you know, move it around. The eggs are still warm. They're still cooking. But, um, you know, we're going to throw this in the fridge and let them start to marinate and get some beautiful color. So you guys need to remind me to flip the eggs every now and then. Every 15 minutes or so, let me know. Tell me, flip the eggs. Okay, so just going to set them in a little bowl here. And then um, every now and then I'm going to go in and just flip them. So the pot of water is boiling. Here in Texas, Blue Bell is king. It's synonymous with ice cream for us. Weird to think of people not knowing it. 
Honestly, the thing is, I looked up where Bluebell is available. And because when we decided to leave, I was like, I need to find out where Bluebell is, where I can get some Bluebell. And Oklahoma and I think southern Colorado is as high north as you can get it. I, I was sad. <laughs> I was very distraught over that, finding that out. Um, yeah, Bluebell was amazing. Sorry guys, I'm trying to get this all squared up so I can get to making the charsu, uh, put the charsu together. I need more space for stuff. Oopsie. <laughs> I'm walking all over myself here. Okay. So for the for the char siu, what I'm gonna do, I've got one cutting board to work with. And I'm going to first prep the veg vegetables because I'm going to use the same cutting board to tie up the pork. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I've got some ginger. I'm going to slice up some ginger. And recipes with this is kind of funny because it says four slices of ginger. That's the one that I had worked with. So I have this little nub of ginger. I'm going to go ahead and cut all of it up and throw it into the uh, into the instant pot instant pot what part of texas are you from now it's got one leak so i'm going to just trim this up i got to be careful cuz my cutting board is balanced on the little box here so what i'm going to do Probably trim this right here. Just little cuts. This is just gonna flavor the uh, flavor the broth. But what I'm actually gonna do first is I'm putting the leeks in a colander because I'll show you guys real quick. Dallas. Oh, we didn't go to Dallas, but um, we had gone to Fort Worth, but not Dallas. So I had washed the leeks earlier, but this is, oopsie, <laughs> this is what you'll find in leeks if you don't clean them very well. They grow in very uh, sandy and uh, dirt. The way they grow, they pick up a lot of dirt, so... You want to be careful about that and you want to make sure to get as much of that out as you can. So what I'm doing is putting it in this colander and I'm going to give it a quick rinse before I add it to the Instapot. Just splitting it in half. You can see it doesn't go all the way through to the, you know, the very center of it, but you do get, see, like that. You don't want that in there. So... We did like Rudy's. <laughs> that was really good. We went, uh, first time we had gone to Texas, we went to the Salt Lake. Um, we didn't go there the second time we were there. We had torchies, tacos. Um, what else did we have? We went to Cooper's in Fort Worth. But, okay, have you been to Cooper's? in uh, Fort Worth because we heard a lot about it and we went there to try the barbecue but uh, we got the pork ribs and he sauced it for us and then we sat down to eat it and we were just ready to dig in to these awesome ribs and awesome barbecue because everybody we everybody had been talking about the barbecue there at Cooper's so we got there sat down Started trying, we took one bite, 
of the ribs, and it honestly was the worst ribs I've ever had, we've ever had. Wife bought, and I were just like, looking at each other like, what the hell is something like? Did we just get pranked or something? It was, it was as if, um, they took the ribs and just put like coated it in salt and then put it out uh, for customers. It tasted like pure salt. The sauce, the sauce was fine. There wasn't any problem with the sauce, but the ribs themselves, it seemed like they were coated, like instead of getting a dry rub, it seemed like it got just a salt rub. It tasted like nothing but salt. So, um, we don't know what that was all about. Alright, I'm going to set this over here to let it drain a little bit. While we get the rest of our ingredients ready. So, yeah, that was a little crazy there. With Cooper's, um really disappointed okay now we've got some garlic yeah we threw away the ribs <laughs> um, it's in Fort Worth it's uh, by the stockyards um, but it uh, just don't know it was it was the we were shocked. We were really just like, what, what's happening? <laughs> because it made no sense that a place that had a reputation like they did was, you know, we were like, is, is this what people like? <laughs> but, um, yeah, we, we didn't finish the ribs. And we just, we tossed them and we left. Okay, so here I've got, I don't know how many here, I've got six, I'm gonna, you know what, I'm gonna probably use all of this. And in the recipe, they have you throwing, peeling these and throwing them in, or crushing them. So I'm just gonna do a quick, quick smack on the garlic. I'm gonna leave the skin on because... You're not going to eat that anyways. You're going to strain out the sauce. So it's not going to make much of a difference. But I'm going to... So you guys can hopefully see. I'm going to get this Instapot in position. Hey, thanks so much for the sub. I wish I heard it. <laughs> Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Every, every sub, every bit, every donation helps. And I really appreciate that. And um, yeah, thank you so much. It's, it's awesome. I really appreciate it. Thank you. The stars at night are big and bright. Yeah, warm pouches. All right, just gonna break these up real quick. Yeah, so those emotes are warm pouches. There's a story about that um, <laughs> where I worked before. We had some a lot of pizza dough left over, and trying to figure out what we could do with it. And I was like, why don't you let me make something and we'll see if it, it goes over. So I made what I called warm pouches, which were basically Hot Pockets. But we couldn't put it out as Hot Pockets because I was like, well, isn't that going to be a problem? And they're like, yeah, you can't call it uh, Hot Pockets. So I said, all right, it's the closest, what's, what's like Hot Pockets but not? What's hot but not hot? Something warm, all right? warm. What's another word for a pouch? I mean a pocket. 
a pouch. All right, we'll call them warm pouches. And I came up with the jingle. I reversed the melodies. You know, it's hot pocket. I said, warm pouches. You know, just flip it around. So the thing was, um, I made a whole bunch. People loved them. They were buying them like crazy. And then um, on my day off during Super Bowl weekend, somebody had come over and asked for a catering order of like 18 of these warm pouches. None of my coworkers knew how to make them. And when I came back, they told me that somebody came in to order them. Nobody knew how to make them. So one of my coworkers, he, he fixed up some that he thought it was like. And she, she got them and she loved them. So this joke little thing that I came up with just for fun ended up selling for a, somebody's Super Bowl party, which was awesome. And that's the emote that you've got right there. Warm pouches. Okay. Um, so that was the beautiful sound of my Instant Pot. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it, but um, let's move this over. Are you a native of Texas? I don't know if you want me to call you one leg, chair, or one leg. One leg sounds good, right? Or chair. Okay, ooh, uh, don't drop the camera. Okay, let's see how this one looks. Okay, all right. Okay, so in this instant pot, I'm gonna drop in the garlic in no particular order. Born and raised. I will call you one leg because I think that's, that's unique. Get the garlic in there. Texas, born and raised. You know, one thing I really wish I got to do down there was uh, go fishing. I love fishing. This, as soon as I could, I got my fishing license. And um, I went down to uh, Georgetown to... Uh, oh, man. The San Gabriel River that runs through Georgetown. I think the North San Gabriel River. And uh, I was just trying to fish and catch something. I saw some uh, alligator gar for the first time in my life. That was awesome. Didn't catch anything, but um, I tried. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna put this together. I turn the water down on my boiling water. Yeah, you know, the thing is, you guys got such warm water down there that they grow huge. And um, that was the thing. I wanted to catch some bass real bad, but um, let's see. I might double this recipe. Wanted to catch some bass, but um, I, I couldn't catch any. I probably was in the wrong spot. I had watched a YouTube video and somebody caught a five pound bass out of that that spot where I was at. So I was just like, oh I'm gonna I'm gonna fish there. And I never did. It was interesting though because the first time we had gone to Texas, um we were walking walking around Austin, we went to the um Congress Bridge to check out those bats, the colony of bats that fly there at dusk. And, and, um, when we were walking around Ladybird, Ladybird Lake, I saw some guy fishing with his son and started talking to him about the fish in there. And I told him about steelhead, which are up here in the Pacific Northwest. And he, he didn't know what I was talking about. He, he was just really confused. He had never heard of it before. Oh, yeah. 15 minutes. Thank you. <laughs> Flip the eggs. See? Audience participation. Thank you so much. 
flipping the eggs. If you can hear that, that's the sound of me flipping the eggs. <laughs> Thank you so much for that active participation. The eggs are flipped. They're getting some nice color on them. They're not going to get the amount of color. <laughs> They're not going to get the amount of color that um, that uh, they would get if I left them in there for 24 hours. The first batch I did, I left them for longer than 24 hours, and my God, they were really good. I just think that uh, it could have been a little bit more sweeter. That's why I added that little uh, that uh, teaspoon or so of uh, brown sugar in there. Thank you for the assist. Those eggs are going to come out awesome because you helped. Okay, mirin. I got half a cup of mirin and half a cup of soy sauce. Need half a cup of sake. Half a cup of sake and then one cup of water. So let's see, there, one cup of water. I appreciate you guys, I really do, hanging out with me when you could be doing anything else. It means a lot to me that you guys are hanging out and um, I hope that I'm bringing you guys some form of entertainment, education, or a little bit of both. Okay, so we've got We've got everything in there except for our leeks, so I'm going to bring the leeks over. I don't know. The last time I doubled up the, the recipe on the liquid because it didn't seem like it was enough to cover the, the pork. And so I just want to, I'm trying to make sure that it's going to be enough for the pork because last time half of it got that nice beautiful color on there and then the other half didn't so if, let's see if I have enough liquid here liquid ingredients I'm gonna just do that again oh half cup of soy sauce let's see I knew I should have bought the bigger bottle of soy sauce Uh, it's very hard to find a lot of ingredients up here in Idaho. There's this is the first place I have ever lived where there is not a Mexican market. I didn't find any super mercan uh god what's it called <laughs> super uh super mercando I don't know. No Vallartas, no nothing. So it's a little strange, little strange. Okay, another oh, half a cup of mirin. And a little bit more sake. Another Another half cup. Yeah, is it Super Mercado? I can't. Okay, sweet. Yeah, but see, the thing is, there is none of the, that up here. <laughs> So I can't get, you know, like, the, I can't get horchata. <laughs> I love horchata and I can't get any horchata here. Like fresh horchata? They probably don't even know what that is. Oopsie. Let me switch that. Sorry. Sorry, everybody. Okay, here's the very technical part. This is where... This is where I'm going to 
What was I gonna do? This is where I'm gonna tie up the the uh, pork. Let's see. I'm gonna tie up the pork and uh, and get it rolled up in a nice tight bundle. But the first thing I'm gonna do is cut it, cut the fat off of there. And I think what I'm gonna do, because the fat is a part of the, the dish, part of the flavoring, I'm gonna just throw the fat into the pot too and let that cook in there. But um, yeah, so I need my water. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I've got butcher's twine, and I'm gonna take a good length of this and then just cut that and I don't know exactly how much I'm gonna need but you can always trim off the excess but this should be enough to trim uh, to tie it up so okay I'm gonna come back here with the pork now now I'm craving horchata horchata Si, un horchata, un horchata grande, por favor. All right, uh, where is it? Got our little pork belly. Okay, so pork belly. Let me, before I do this, let me go ahead real quick and wash my hands. It's not a very big piece of pork belly because we don't need a large amount. And when typically with this char siu pork, you're going to want to have it cool down before slicing it. It'll be easier to slice when it's cooled down. But we're just going to cook it and then slice it uh, once it's done for this ramen. Okay, hands are clean. I'm just going to take this pork belly and I've got this all lined up. Pork belly. Mm. Okay, if many of you are not familiar with the pork belly, it is, you've got a thin strip of meat here on the bottom, and then you've got, you've typically you have a layer of fat and then the skin right here. This is a really, this is a better piece than we had the last time. So normally what you would do for this dish is just take it as is and then roll it up into a tight little ball and then tie it up but when we did it last when I did it last time this didn't render off and cook off enough so what I'm gonna do is just trim this off and then I'm gonna throw it into the pot and yes I know <laughs> this is probably sacrilegious that I'm doing this for <laughs> the ramen dish but in the interest of getting it to work with my Instant Pot, I'm going to do it. Because you have to adapt. So this right there is the fat. And I'm just going to take this, throw it into the Instant Pot. Instant Pot. I'm just going to call it Instant Pot. I'm gonna slice this up, make it a little whoop, more manageable pieces. Careful not to dump my cutting board into onto the floor. And throw this into the pot. Hey, what's up, death? Ah, how you doing, man? How was your uh, how was your cake? 
Thank you so much for the raid. I don't know if you want me to call you Death anymore <laughs> because your name has changed. Um, but thank you so much for the raid. I really appreciate it. Um, for those of you that don't know who I am, I'm Kitchen Confidence. Um, and, and, uh, hey, oh, wait, Buff Bagwell's here? I got to do the thing. I can't do it right. Let's see. He used to go like this, like this, like this, and then like that. <laughs> um, oh, all right, man. I've known you as Death, so I'm going to keep calling you Death. All right, so I've got the fat there in the... Instapot. <laughs> you like that, Bagwell? Hey, Skip, what's going on? Came out like a custard more than a cake, but still tastes good. Oh, really? Was that the way it was supposed to come out? No, it wasn't dribbling. It was uh, Buff Bagwell. That was, that's what he used to do in the ring. <laughs> Buff Bagwell. Okay, yeah, um, if you guys don't know, I'm one of the, I guess, I'm still one of the newer streamers. I took a break because we moved, and now I'm back, and I appreciate you guys. <laughs> Very accurate tribute. Thanks, man. <laughs> um, and I'm back to streaming. This is my second stream. I've got a regular stream schedule um, that I'm kind of revamping. So, I think we're going to try to start streaming at 5 instead of 7. Um, not exactly sure yet. And that's my... That's our cat scratching on the scratching post. Okay, this is a, a nice little nubby little roast. Buff Bagwell's a gigolo now, the last I heard. It was sad, though, because I saw an interview where he was talking, and he's like, this is the only, uh, he, this is the only thing that I know. I don't know anything else. So when he got cut from, uh, his short stint in the WWE, he became a gigolo. <laughs> but I did see him do some wrestling in, like, some backyard show. So I don't really need all of this twine, but it's going to work. You just want to make sure that it's going to stay tight. So the way I'm tying it up is really simple. You can do this for a lot of your roasts, a lot of your roulades and all that. Same thing will apply. You just tie off your initial tie, get down a little bit down the roast or whatever you're going to roast or cook. Tie it up around. Now you don't want to, you don't want to tie it off here. You want to uh, kind of come up higher. Oh hey, my nightbot works still. I gotta refresh myself with uh, Twitch. I've been away for a while. So see, right now I've got this kind of lined at an angle, but when you pull it tight, it's gonna line back up. See, so. I'm just going to do that all the way around here because we want to get a really good tight fit on here. All right, Tig or girl, <laughs> you have a great night. Thank you for stopping by. Really appreciate it. I'm buff and I'm the stuff. That big hat. Tig, okay. Have a great night. Thank you for stopping by. I really do appreciate it. Got to get that homework done. Yeah, if you are a pro wrestling fan, we will get along. <laughs> I watched um, Steiner, Scott Steiner, uh, when he did some wrestling in uh, Global Impact Wrestling or whatever it's called now. Whatever they're trying to call it. 
Well, let's see. I should just go back across a couple times. Don't want to waste it all. Pro wrestling is my dream job. Okay, let's see. Like I said, if if I was offered a contract right now to be able to to uh, wrestle professionally and it would be able to pay the bills and all that stuff, I would do it in a heartbeat. Bring hardcore back. Oh, seriously, Bagwell? Buff? BB? I don't know. I'm Buff Bagwell. <laughs> the odds of you even uh, trusting something other than a whole chicken are very low. Um, if you want to do like stuffed pork or um, stuffed chicken breast, like a roulade, anything like that, this is perfect way to do it. Uh, backyard Wrestling. Oh, that's awesome. Have them give me a call. I, I'd want to do it. <laughs> okay, so I dropped the... Oh, that'll work. I've got to wash... Oh, I was supposed to blanch this first. <laughs> okay. My hands are all dirty, so I can't move the camera. But I am taking the pork... And putting it into the now just hot water. And we're going to blanch that for 10 minutes. Probably less because this is a small cut. We're not going to need to go 10 minutes on it. Backyard wrestling. I Back in high school I had a couple of friends that we were all into wrestling. And we had... I think we had some guy that talked about he was going to put up a backyard wrestling thing together. And we were like, all right, well, you know, we'll do it. You guys, if you get a ring and all that stuff. Because he said he was, um, he was higher, higher up in the financial standings. And, um, oopsie. <laughs> and he, uh, he said he was going to get a ring and all this and all that and he never did he was just talking and uh but we were ready me and my friends um oh really one of them used to wrestle with Seamus oh that's awesome I met, um, my wrestling dream came true when I finally got to meet uh, Mick Foley for his uh, first book. I went to the book signing at Sam Goody's in Universal Studios, Universal City Walk, and I got to meet him, you know, he did a book signing. I say it was the uh, first time I fangirled over anything, um... My heart was racing and all that crap. But, um, yeah, there was a lot of people there. It was pretty cool. I had to pee, but I had to hold it for six hours because I didn't want to give up my spot, which in hindsight, I could have just asked somebody, hey, I got to go to the bathroom. Can you just watch my stuff? <laughs> but um, it was really <laughs> it was really juvenile because I was an adult already at the time. But I wrote him a letter. With my address and everything, with I poured my wrestling heart out to him, saying how he was my hero, he was my wrestling icon, and I wanted to be a wrestler. That was my dream. And if he could, would he mentor me? If he knew anybody that could help me out and get me in the business, please, this is my address. Contact me. Here's my phone number, and all that. And you know, I I was I was all in on that. 
Oh, that's awesome, Buff. What made you stop? All right, our pork. Very exciting. Let me move this so you guys can see. I move everything around so you guys can see. Once I get set up better, um, this will be easier. And I don't know how many minutes it's been already. Is it time to flip the eggs? Somebody, I thought somebody said something about the eggs. Oh, I missed that. Yep, it's time to flip the eggs. Flip the eggs, so... So they get nice and marinated. Okay, so the purpose of blanching the, the pork like this, the pork belly, is... You can see it's all of this foam up here. That's all the impurities and fat and all of that from the eggs, I mean from the pork. And when you do this, you're getting rid of that and you're removing it from the actual cooking of the, the pork in the Instapot. So that's, um, that's why we're doing that. And just so you guys can see, that's the eggs right now. And look how they've already got a nice color. They're starting to get a really nice color to them already. It's not much time that we've had this in the marinade, but they're getting a really nice color on them. It's just going to pick up all that nice flavor too. Yeah, we're going to keep uh, flipping these eggs until we're done with the whole cooking. Move town and whatnot made it harder to get to meats and stuff. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. I mean, you hear all the time. Let's see. I'm going to... One second. I'm going to try something different with this Instapot this time. And I'm going to... Let's see if I can do... Nope. Okay. Meat. Let's see, it's a little cut, so let's just go... Well, it says 90 minutes, so... Mm, let's go for an hour and see, because this is a small piece of meat. Alright. Uh, sealing. Alright, so it's on that setting. And now it should just kind of go. Wrestling podcast? I love listening to... Oh, wait a minute. What am I doing? <laughs> the pork is still in here. <laughs> See what happens? I start talking wrestling and I'm all over the place. All right. We'll take this out. Put it into the pot. And then... Then we'll <laughs> set it to go. All right, just got that into the pot. That's turned off. So, all right, so right now we've got everything is in the instant pot. It's a lot smaller than the last piece that we cooked. So, Hopefully this is going to be easier and give you guys a peek there. So there's the pork. We've got all of our ingredients there. So I'm just going to put the lid on. Uh, 
and then I had it on here. We'll go for an hour and let's see how that comes out because this is a small piece. And an hour it'll be 9, 18. All right, so while so while that's going on, we got a little bit of cleanup to do. This pot I'm gonna use for for our um, uh, that's gonna be the pot that we're gonna boil and cook the ramen noodles in. And I'll just show you guys the noodles because again, it's very hard to find ingredients here. So I did find these ramen packets and I've used these before, they're really good. So it's just, it's just uh, two packs of ramen and some shoyu um, seasoning. And these work very well, they're really full of flavor, really good. So that's what we're going to use once, once this is good and ready. So I'm just going to keep it in here for right now, and then we're going to use that. Do, do, do. Sign poster from when you met the Road Warriors. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, I have I have my uh, signed um, Have a Good Day signed to me, which was awesome. But, yeah, I've got... Um, uh, I don't have anything from the old days, but um, that's my one thing is my um, my signed Mick Foley book. Okay, so we'll do a little bit of clean up here, and you guys will <laughs> get to watch me clean a little, because this is the part where we... We sit, we wait, and I might um, might actually do a little a little prep. Woo! That could have ended bad. A little prep um, for tomorrow, tomorrow morning, because um, like I said, we're trying to be healthier, so we we drink smoothies in the morning so maybe I will set up the blender to with everything in there so it'll be ready to ready to just um, take out and then blend up in the morning save some time let that cool a little bit The other thing I like to uh, listen to are podcasts from wrestlers because I really enjoy the other side of the business. Like, yeah, I grew up watching wrestling as a child, and I I appreciate the business. And for me, the biggest thrill I get now, because like nowadays wrestling is kind of kind of getting stale. Well, when I say that, I mean WWE. Um, but I love hearing stories from wrestlers about, you know, their time coming up in the business and just the funny stories that they've got. And it's, you know, like the beef that they've... <laughs> the real beefs that they have with uh, the certain wrestlers and stuff like that. All those things, they really interest me when I, when, uh, I can listen to their stories and just how things have changed and their you know the way they see new up and coming stars and stuff like that yeah it's way too pg pg ruined wrestling well it ruined the wwe it's like i've uh, you know everybody's talking about hell in the cell when it was coming up everybody was they were trying to hype it up and talk about how it was going to be so extreme and this and that, but it's PG. 
everybody knows they're not going to go far because there's only so far that they can go now. So, you know, it's... I mean, I give credit to Randy Orton and Jeff Hardy for the whole uh, screwdriver in the ear whole thing. <laughs> that was That was something different. I mean, yeah, I haven't I haven't seen a table break in a while. I don't know why I mean they they uh bust each other up on the announce table, but you know, to to the long-time fans, they know that's not the worst that can happen. This podcaster's a radio host and at the age of 38 started taking wrestling classes. Now he wrestles for fun. Uses his contacts to get wrestlers on the cast. Oh, awesome. He's wrestling at 38? Starting his career at 38? WWE should remain for those that still enjoy it, but maybe those who are looking for the harder shit separate or double time with a second program. The more gruesome work. Well, like, um, I've been, uh, I've been trying to get more into, like, New Japan and uh, Ring of Honor. I'm, I don't, like, the really regional and independent scene, I don't know much about that. But, um, I love (laughs) the Bullet Club, like, New New Japan Bullet Club, not, I guess I would say, when I say Bullet Club, I mean Tamatanga and, uh, you know, those guys, the Tongans that are doing the Bullet Club thing. And um, those guys, they're like right now doing the whole heel, going back to uh, going back to the heel, old school heel um, work that they used to do. And it's uh, starting to really... Uh, piss a lot of the fans off, which is exactly what heels do. And if you if you want to see a good heel, Tamatanga, check out his what he does. Um, like right now, he's him and Reigns have gone back and forth on Twitter. Um, I think it's a lot of that is just the fact that Roman isn't so great and. Roman Samoan and Tamatanga, he's Tongan. So there's that whole deal too. But um Yeah, he does he's doing some really awesome heel work. New Japan, um AJ was in New Japan for a little bit after TNA. Sumo is awesome. When we were in Oregon, um my wife wife bought she um she had worked for uh, Comcast, and we had new. Uh, we had Japan One. Here I'm sitting, what midnight or something, watching sumo wrestling, and just loving the hell out of it. One PW is good. Um, Japan, see hardcore wrestling. Japan, uh, when was the last time they did the Japanese deathmatch? Some of the, yeah, sumo wrestling is awesome. Hey, what's up, Ben? How you doing? (laughs) Don't worry. We always have Twitch. (laughs) Yeah, it's funny because I'm... I was just thinking about when you showed up at New Seasons that last time, man. It was awesome. We're doing our ramen. Everything is kind of cooking right now, and we're on some downtime. Actually, um, if anybody can find a recipe for marinated bean uh, bamboo shoots, maybe we can do that right now. Because I have... Um, I have some uh, bamboo shoots that I did want to 
marinate for this for this stream. I just forgot that I had that. Compilation of matches are a good default. Otherwise, the championships are pretty great. I I watched this uh, highlight of this one guy. He was a small. He was a. He was a non-Japanese sumo wrestler, kind of smaller guy. I forgot what his his name started with a T. Uh, but he, the highlight showed him just beating the larger sumo wrestlers, and uh, God, I can't remember his name. He was very popular, I guess, because the comments talked about how uh, he was a fan favorite because he was small, but he would beat a lot of the larger sumo wrestlers. Seattle era wrestling, three, two, one battle. Um, there was a Pacific Northwest uh, wrestling in outside of Portland, and Gangrel wrestles there. But uh, we had wanted to go to one of the matches because uh, if you guys know, wrestling in the Pacific Northwest was huge back in the day. And we wanted to go to um, to see this match. I mean, to see this event. They, I guess they taped it on certain days. But we were going to go to the match. Kind of forgot about it. But it was just like a really local scene. They wrestled in a, in a army base hangar, I think. And it, it just looked awesome. They, they would air their matches. It was late at night, but they would air their matches on local uh, TV, so it was kind of cool, and I was like, what, Gangrel's there? <laughs> I was like, I gotta go meet him. You do a mean braised bamboo shoot, but apart from that, can't help me. <laughs> well, there's, um, I don't know exactly what it's called. It's it's marinated bamboo shoots for ramen. It's like men menma uh bamboo shoots or something like that but um um i'm not exactly sure about a recipe let's just take our eggs out give a quick little peek at them and so this is what we've got on our eggs right now Oop, let me get this out of the way let's be professional so professional. So that's it right there. Looking pretty good. I mean, the longer you let this sit and marinate, the more flavor they're going to have. And, you know, it's, it's, uh, it hasn't been very long, but these are looking really good. They smell really good right now, too. The, uh, Let's see, the Instant Pot is going now, it's sealed up, so it's going to cook for an hour. Warm pouches! Hey, if you guys don't know, uh, VG Shazbot, awesome gaming streamer, he's a buddy of mine, we used to work together, and uh, he does a lot of really cool streams, he does artwork as well, you guys should go check him out, give him a follow, if you want to do me a favor give him a follow I really appreciate that he's helping me out if it wasn't for him I wouldn't be on twitch so you guys do me a favor go give him a follow especially if you like gaming so yeah we're gonna put these back into the fridge let them do their thing a little bit more I can already smell the pork uh, the char siu in the instapot <laughs> smelling good so we got our big pot here up front this is going to be I need more water in that this is gonna be for the uh, noodle noodles the ramen noodles then my smaller pot is going to be for the broth I know I didn't need to do it I wanted to do it <laughs> um, but let's see real quick because I haven't used, I have not used these in a very long time. Dissolve, oh, okay, so dissolve it with some one and a half cup of water in a bowl. 
Yeah, I'm going to do it a little bit differently. But this is going to need to come up to a boil. And eventually I will be making ramen from scratch, like 100% from scratch. I'm going to learn off stream. I'm going to do some trial and error with uh with making some ramen noodles. And then the shoyu broth, gonna try that as well. And then once I got that down, oh, and the bamboo. Once I have all that down and together, I'm gonna do a, I guess, a full day stream because this is gonna take a while. But yeah, a lot of waiting right now. Um, so you know what? You guys have questions, culinary questions. Ask away, I'm right here, we've got time, and um, I can't find a marinated bamboo recipe, so we can't get on that. But, um, so you guys know, um, right now, my streaming schedule, it's different from what, what I have on my page right now. It says 7 o'clock on Friday and Saturday, and then I think 10 o'clock on Sunday. But I think we're going to try to start streaming at 5 uh, on Friday and Saturdays. And Sundays will probably stick to 10 o'clock. Um, uh, but um, yeah, we're going to... We're changing it up a little bit. And I'm going to be doing more... Uh, hopefully I'm going to be streaming every day. We're is uh, Jedi La Lado raiding with a party of seventeen. Hey, thank you so much for the raid. I really appreciate that. Wow, thank you so much, everybody who just jumped into the raid, um, jumped into the channel. Thank you for coming over and hanging out. Uh, I'm Kitchen Confidence. I don't know how you guys found me. <laughs> hey, what's going on? Um, you have Jedi in your name, and just so you know, I am a huge Star Wars fan, so that's awesome. I hope that's why you have Jedi in your name. Um, you're a Chinese couple from Toronto, and I Chinese too. Um, I am half Chinese, half Cambodian, so half yes. <laughs> do you also do um, cooking streams, uh, Jedi? Hey, Red, thank you for stopping by. Pride fighting was awesome, uh, Drake. Oh. Okay, you mean Chinese pride. <laughs> That's awesome too, but I thought you meant uh, pride, like the MMA, MMA group. Um, N-K-Y... I don't know how to say your name. Hey, Buff Bagwell, thank you for the subscription, man. Look, wrestling fan... Got the yes chant going. Can't fake it. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. That really does mean a lot to me because I just came back and... Um, Haley, Je Jedi, thank you for the follow. I really appreciate it. Um, I've been away from Twitch for a couple months and it really, it really does mean a lot to me when people come into the streams and uh, hang out with me and... I I can't say enough good things about the people that support me because I don't do this if nobody was here to watch me I kind of wouldn't be doing this it's so I really appreciate it everybody that's here now everybody that subs everybody that follows I really appreciate it thank you so much pride was amazing um Yes, it is from the IT crowd. 
uh, Drew Mega, are you familiar with the show? That is me and my wife's favorite British show. We have it. Uh, we have the box set. Uh, we have T-shirts. We have mugs. Do we have mugs? No, I don't think we have mugs. Um, yeah, where I used to work, nobody knew about the show. I started talking about it, and a couple of people have watched it since then, and they just fell in love with that show. It's the best British show ever. Um, yes, see, WifeBot has the Moss uh, sticker on her on her laptop. <laughs> Oh, wow, it was on G4? I didn't know that. Damn. The first time we came across it, it was on Netflix, so we were, we were really, uh, really behind. And Kyridian, you hosted. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. You guys are awesome, and um, I don't know how to say... I don't know how to... How to say your name though? Enkyridian. Devin, Devin is Mombot for you. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> um. Yeah, I watched. We watched some of Toast of London. Uh, we didn't. We didn't uh, keep up on it though. But I did watch clips of Toast when uh, they would always do the voice recordings, the voiceovers, and. He's the one that had me cracking up so hard was the one with the submarine um f f fired the nuclear missile dadbot all right you want me to start calling you dadbot too <laughs> um thank you so much for the hosts thank you for the follows thank you for the subs you guys are amazing um i mean we <laughs> the voice recordings were Clem Fandango, is that the work release boy? Uh, okay, I won't call you dad bot then. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, we've got some time right now, and um, I don't know, I I did an Instagram live video for the first time today where I was I was doing a QA, and a but um, I didn't set it up very well, I didn't give enough notice, so uh, not a lot of people showed up for that, so I mean, if you guys have any questions, if you guys want to know more about me, what I'm kind of doing and stuff, ask away. If, you get, if you've got wrestling trivia or anything like that, Star Wars, you know. I can hear you, Clem Fandango. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Matt Berry is awesome. He also does music, too, if, uh, if you don't know. He... I guess he has a band, or he does music. He's like a musician, puts out albums and all that stuff too. He's that guy is so funny. Matt Berry. Um. Yeah, you know it's it's awesome to be back on Twitch. Oh, I can't read that dash of fruit, Meg. Thank you so much for the follow. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, there's one song that I know of his that um, it's called Medicine. Um, it's really like, it's kind of got a really retro laid back vibe to it. Um, but it's just funny because the faces he make makes when he's playing, it's kind of like that that one episode in the IT crowd where they, they've got that secret um, like workout where Jen, the, that meeting that Jen keeps getting, uh, she's not allowed in the meeting and then she finds out they're doing aerobics and he's making those weird faces when they're working out. He kind of does that in the video so I kind of laugh every time I, I listen to that song. But yeah, you know what? You guys, I'm open for questions right now because we don't have much really um, we're waiting is what we're doing right now so I've got water there I'm gonna have some water there for the show you we've got our actual char siu pork right there cooking 48 minutes um, so
So, yeah, I think I should have maybe... Oh, that's what I was going to kind of talk about. Um, I have a menu for this week that's... Uh, that for my Friday, Saturday, and Sunday stream, Friday I'm going to be doing a chicken breast with a coconut avocado sauce. And then Saturday we're going to do a pork chop with a cranberry caramel sauce and um, what's that other thing I was going to make? <laughs> butternut squash, um, a butternut squash and dill potatoes I think and then Sunday is when I do a breakfast stream or more of a brunch kind of breakfast brunch stream because I, I do it at 10. It's going to be shorter so I'll, I'll be doing a uh, just a smoothie and then a uh, avocado toast that's really quick and easy. We are in Idaho. We lived in Oregon uh, until June or July, one of the J months, July. And we moved to Texas, and Texas was too humid for us. So we came here now to Idaho. Father! <laughs> here lies a great man. A great man. <laughs> a marinated bamboo shoots recipe? <laughs> Unhand me, priest! Where is your guard? Where is your guard now? <laughs> Anytime there's an excuse, an excuse to quote the IT crowd, I will run with it. <laughs> um, what's the recipe, Stinky? If I've got the stuff, maybe we could do a quick uh, marinade. I thought it, I thought we could make it work because you looked a bit like a man. <laughs> um, yeah, the, <laughs> there was one time at work that me and another guy that knows the show, we were walking down the hallway and then I was like, I'm pedophile. And a couple of people turned around and I was like, no, no, it's from a show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yelling pedophile <laughs> to people that don't know the joke can get you in trouble. So <laughs> be careful. With great power comes great responsibility. Oh, wait. Um, if I click on that link, it's going to take me away from chat. Mm. Is it uh, marinated bamboo shoots for ramen? Or is it a different kind of a marinated... Oh, the IT crowd. Um... I had seen that um, Richard Ayoade went on to do a show, I guess like a technology show or something like that afterwards. Not exactly sure. Um, ooh, can you get me my chef shoes? <laughs> my feet are hurting. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, Gadget Man. Thank you. Thank you, WifeBot, for my shoes. Um, let's see. Oh, there was Travel Man, too? I didn't know that he did a, another show. Let's see. Yeah, that the cast on there was so perfect. And... Um, did you guys ever see when they tried to... They did an American pilot, and it was horrible. I don't know if you guys ever saw that, but um, it was horrible. Oh, sweet. Thanks. Thanks, dad bot. You want me to... Ben, you want me to continue the rest of the stream in that voice I did for my... My uh, flautas, rolling the flautas video?
three cups sliced uh, olive oil, sesame oil. Okay, let's see. Barry, what's going on? KC is back. Yeah, we finally got settled in. We're not in Texas. We're not in Oregon. We're not in Texas. We're in Idaho now. All right. You would be impressed if I could keep it up the whole time. Maybe I can. Let's see. Um, but I have to first read the ingredients because I don't have that. I uh, have that. I don't have that. I have... I don't have that. <laughs> I ran out of that. So, okay, maybe I can't do it. <laughs> you know what, maybe... I'm a... I'm a freaking chef. Do I need a recipe? I can make one. Let's make one. Okay, I'm gonna... This is what we're gonna do. Hopefully... Um... Hopefully, I don't get like new viewers that think that I'm I'm messed up in the head or something. But I'm gonna do this because um, two things. I'm gonna use my wrestling persona, but I'm also gonna blend it with my whatever the hell accent thing I was doing in my stream. I mean, my little video. I don't know if I can do that. Um, let's see. Let's see. Well, I don't know. Can I do it? Can I? Let's get these. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know. How about you? Yeah, I've got sesame oil for sure. Alright, we're just gonna blind make a... Uh, a uh, friggin marinated um, thingy. What's it? Bamboo shoots. All right, those two, let me get a bowl. Now we are cooking for real. <laughs> Strategery. <laughs> All right. Got a little bowl, little bowl. Just gonna drop this down. Here, look, it's a bowl. Boop. I don't want to make a mess of things, but... Okay. So, we're going to start with making the marinade, and then we're going to taste it, make sure that it tastes okay, and then we're going to add the... add the bamboo shoot in last. Alright, so I'm going to start with a little bit of sesame oil. That's, I think that's a little bit much. A lot of the time while cooking, I made it up as I go. Generally it turns out between edible and damn, that's good. Alright, well that's the thing. Um, my general idea is always to cook by taste. So if you can do that, um, more power to you. A lot of people will follow recipes, and that's perfectly fine. Recipes, in my opinion, are guidelines. So, you just use them as a guideline. Oh man, I'm out of soy sauce. Frickin' frick! <laughs> I just used the last of the soy sauce. Okay. Challenge. You know what? Let's, it's not exactly the same. No, that wouldn't be in the same theme. Uh, all right, that's going to be too salty. Oh, you know what? We're going to go for it. I got fish sauce. Just going to add a little bit of that. Okay. Adventures in the kitchen. That's what we do on Kitchen Confidence. Kitchen Confidence. Limit it up. And it's the Kitchen Confidence show. Okay. There we go. I'm going to wash my knife real quick. Yeah, cooking 
for me is about taste. I go by taste. I hardly have a recipe that I will write down when I cook because I just constantly taste and see how it see how it tastes and if it's good then we're good to go. That's why I don't like baking because baking is all about um all about um measuring. Worcestershire would probably good a be a a good alternative to soy sauce, but I don't have that either. Just adding a little bit of the fish sauce because it is very strong and salty. Alright, man. Ben, thanks so much for hanging out, man. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you... I don't know when the next time you're streaming, but I'll see you uh, if I can. So, thanks a lot, man. Really appreciate it. Um, blend tofu with it? With the sauce? Oh, wait. I need to catch up with the chat. Everyone, that's our uncle. Are you guys really related? Uh, cooking blind is the way to find your own rhythm and recipes. Um, I'm good, glad to be back. Uh, it's a great adventure in the kitchen or supermarket if you don't mind leaving the house. Blend tofu with it. I don't have tofu either. <laughs> okay, well, let's see. Separate the men from the boys. Little bit of five spice. I'm going into the more... I'm all over the place right now with... Um, <laughs> it's no longer just um, Japanese marinated... Um, marinated... Uh, whatchamacallit anymore. Where's my whisk? I'm gonna get my plastic whisk to make it gentle on the ears. It's not much of a marinade right now. And some of that five spice didn't dissolve. Gonna add, it smells pretty good actually. Gonna add a little bit of sugar. Let's get the sesame oil away because that's pretty damn strong. Sugar. We've got our sugar right here, so I'm going to add a little bit of sugar, make it, give it a little bit of sweetness to it. Um, seriously, you guys, Chazbot is an awesome streamer. He's doing wow now. He was doing Fortnite for the longest time, but um, <laughs> he told me uh, he's just like got burned out on it. A little bit of salt. Yeah, the... This kitchen is a lot smaller, so we don't have a lot of, um... Space for stuff, so kind of limited. I'm limiting myself on what I'm buying ahead of time. Um, just because I'm trying to save some space. Alright. That's very sesame E. Once I perfected a family recipe much better than my dad's, I got sad. Uh, took me years of working on it. Talking to my brothers and aunts, but I nailed it. Happy and sad at the same time. I think I remember you, uh, telling me that last time. Um, that it... It kind of didn't live up to the memory. All right, I have, I'm just gonna try this and see what it tastes like. There's not much in this yet, but I wanna taste it to see where it's at. It's very, well, the sugar isn't dissolved, but got my little tasting dish. Okay, let's give it a taste. Hmm. Very uh, sesame. 
E and not at all salty, so a little bit more on the fish sauce. The five spice comes through a lot. Oops, sorry. Alright, let's see what this is going to be like now. Just a little bit more fish sauce. Mmm. Too much fish sauce. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's strong. Well, if I kick that back a little bit, it's probably good. I mean, considering, considering what it is, let's see. What do you guys think of uh, Undertaker going back in to fight um, Triple H? There's a guy that I, I wish they would just let him retire. He deserves a retirement and just let the guy retire. It's like, I wish he would come out one day and do his little spiel in the ring. And he's like, it's time for me to rest in peace. Or just let me rest in peace. <laughs> Terrifically old. Oh, I'm cold. Olive, you're all right, Olive. You're not cold at all, are you, Olive? Give her a man. Give her a jacket, man. <laughs> We're gonna get along real well. Um. He's he's going to be at the their match. Yeah, he he won the mayor seat in Knoxville, Tennessee. <laughs> I work here. I work here. Um it was awesome cuz I watched his uh his uh speech and he was, he comes out to his intro music. <laughs> I was like, that is awesome. All right, I'm just trying to dilute the, um, <laughs> the fish sauce I've added to it. It doesn't taste bad, actually. It's just that the fish sauce is a little strong. The thing is, to go from pro wrestler to political, well, mayor, Jesse Ventura, what, um, what seat did he hold? He was in Minnesota, I think. Uh, get some more salt in there to even it up a little bit. <clears throat> of Minnesota, I think. I'm not sure. I don't know. I thought it was Minnesota for sure, but I just don't know if it was governor or maybe mayor or something. But that was when I was like, oh. Oh, and I watched... um. All in the the Bullet Club. I guess they did. I guess it was more the brainchild of Cody Rhodes and uh, the Young Bucks. They did. Um, oh, he was governor of Minnesota. Okay, thank you, wife bot, for the assist. Um, the Young Bucks and 
Cody Rhodes put together a pay-per-view um, called All In, and it was pretty, pretty awesome. Um, it was a cross, cross um, promotion for different companies, and um, friggin' what's his name? Ah, uh, oh God, six one nine guy. What is his name? Um, oh God, what is his name? Ray, uh, Mysterio, Ray Mysterio. He came out as uh, dressed like Wolverine. Yeah, that's much better. All right, so I think. Yeah. He he came out as Wolverine, like classic Wolverine, with a yellow and gold um, outfit. And uh, Kenny Omega wrestled um, Penta Pentagon Jr. Um, but it was a lot of like cross promotions just all coming together to do this show, which was really awesome to see. Guys that you wouldn't think was were ever going to wrestle each other. Um, well, who's his name? Okada? No, not Okada. Uh, God, I can't remember his name. Um, ah, God. Um, the guy that his, his finishing move was the... The Burning Hammer, I guess. <laughs> uh God, why can't I remember his name? Um, he's like a... The dude pulls off these crazy moves. I can't remember his name. It's not Okada. Now that I think about it. But he wrestled um, Rey Mysterio and they were just going off on each other. Yeah, Kobashi, I think. Um, oh, he he had a fracture in his leg? I didn't know that. He looks fit as hell now. He looks he looks like he's packed on a lot of muscle. I'm opening the can of um Kota, uh, Kota Ibashi. He, yeah, I know, oh, I'm opening, just so you guys know, I'm going to open the can of bamboo shoots. We're going to add some of that to the, um, to the, uh, marinade. Burning hammer is a crazy move. That's, um, you've got to have a lot of faith in the guy doing that to you. <laughs> Thing is, I haven't seen a lot of the more risky moves uh, because I don't watch a lot of indie shows anymore. I kind of don't know which ones are out there, but um, yeah, the indies and the guys doing stuff in the backyards, it gets crazy. Okay, I'm just going to drop a few in here. Let that marinate a little bit. Okay, so I don't know how this is going to turn out or how much we'll get uh, in in the actual bamboo, but that reminds me to turn the eggs. <clears throat> Canadian Destroyer is awesome. I've always loved that move, and um, it's funny because I watched... I watched, uh, I listened to a podcast with um, Cornette, and he said the Canadian Destroyer is the stupidest move ever, because it doesn't work. How does that work? And he's like, you know, it just, it's too over the top, and he was just really complaining about the logic with that move. And, you know, it just, like, really 
really like ripping uh, P.D. Williams for it and just saying, you know, it's it's a ridiculous move and nobody should be doing that. It's just, you know, shouldn't be done. And the, the thing is that somebody had said in the in the comments to that that uh don't I have a bigger pot somewhere? Oh yeah, I do right there. I'm gonna use that too. Um so yeah, so um Cornette was saying how bad the move was, it's just a stupid move. Nobody should be doing it, it's just stupid and ridiculous, over the top, whatever. But somebody commented and said, Okay, you think it's unrealistic and and it's a stupid move or whatever. This is wrestling. Has he forgotten that this is wrestling? If you want to see a stupid move, something that doesn't work, how about an Irish whip? <laughs> and it was like, well, he's got you there. Yeah, you know, the thing is, like, I remember years ago when um, CM Punk had a match with Cena and I uh, C, uh, CM Punk pile drived Cena and the word was in the back Vince McMahon was losing it because you know they had already banned the pile driver but the two of them came to an agreement because the, their match was they wanted to kind of kick it up for the match so they used the pile driver but the the two of them came to a mutual agreement that yeah go ahead do it on me and you know just do it but um Vince McMahon just lost it on them when they got backstage and they had to explain that no it was mutually um it was something that they both agreed to so you know it's perfectly fine whatever i mean the thing about the power driver is it's only dangerous if it's done wrong. It's, you know, make sure the guy is up high enough and it'll be fine. But there are people that, I don't know. I, one thing I do like to watch is botch videos because for one thing, it lets you appreciate the level of skill that a lot of, the people that perform, um, the level of skill it takes to do this seamlessly during a match in front of people, one take, you're not, you know, you don't get a do-over. When you do, <laughs> when you botch it bad and then you have to kind of do it over, it looks horrible. But when it plays out perfectly and everything, everybody's in the right spot, everything falls into place, it looks like... It's natural. It doesn't look like it's all been planned out or anything like that. People people want to talk crap about wrestling and, oh, it's fake and this and that and, you know, make fun of people that watch wrestling or enjoy wrestling. You know, how many people spend thousands of dollars going to the movie theaters every year to watch people pretend to be something that they're not? For your entertainment. What's the difference there? I am an advocate for wrestling. I will always be an advocate for pro wrestling, I should say. And, um, yeah, it's... It's just, um... It's, it still does kind of annoy me when people uh, would say, why, why do you watch that fake stuff? It's like, why do you watch movies? For entertainment. So it's the same thing, but you know, they don't have stuntmen doing the moves for them. They don't have, you know, oh let's let's applaud this one actor because they went through six weeks of training to do this one thing. Well, let's applaud the wrestlers for putting their bodies on the line just for you to cheer or boo them. Okay, wire. Watch out for the wire. I tangled up. Nope. Okay, I've got two pots of water because 
I realize that one pot's not going to be enough. Wifebot likes a lot of broth in her ramen, so um, clearly the one pot wouldn't work for the both of us because I too like a lot of broth. We're going to see how much broth we get out of, um, out of these. The, um, I mean, Hell in the Cell, <laughs> when, when uh, Undertaker threw Mick Foley off, I, when I watched it on the pay-per-view, I was like, oh my god. As soon as he started taking his mask off, I knew something was wrong. And I was telling my brother, I was like, no, no, that, that something is wrong. He's, he's taking his mask off. It's, he doesn't do that. <laughs> this is something happened. He's really hurt. And then when he came back on the, came running back off of the stretcher, I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> And for them to, I just listened um, to an interview, or maybe not an interview, but the WWE put out this little snippet of, it was a telephone interview with The Undertaker, and then it was also from uh, um, Mick Foley and um, Jim Ross, kind of their their thoughts of what was going on that night and stuff, and um so going into that match undertaker had busted his ankle his ankle was uh he sprained it or something but it had been that way for for weeks but going into that match he had a sprained ankle but they still were like no you know he wanted to go on and he wanted to he wanted to do the show so he wrestled that Hell in the Cell on a sprained ankle and, you know, climbed up the cage and all that. And they were talking about when when he threw him off, uh, Undertaker said that he kind of went... He was in that moment. He didn't realize what was really going on. They started lifting the cage. He knew that um, they were trying to get to Mick with the the stretcher. And he was like, well, I guess I can't get down. <laughs> I hope they don't forget about me. But um, when he saw Mick coming back up, he's like, all right, you know, we, we're going to go on. And um, he said that when they did the choke slam on the top, how he realized how lucky they were because if you watch, the, if you watch that spot, he steps back behind that panel that gave way. Undertaker stepped back onto the other panel. And he was saying that, just think how bad it would have been if he was standing on the same panel and they both fell through. You know, how how much more, you know, that could have been really bad for the both of them if both of them fell through. So just those little things about that match is like, it's crazy that nobody died doing that so i mean that match is the one match i will point to to people when when they try to complain or say oh wrestling's fake or whatever but I, and you know that's the one i point out to but i know there's a lot more matches out there that are bad but you know they don't get the same kind of attention because i mean getting thrown off of a top of the cage onto a table and just getting laid out like when he hit I think what uh, Foley said he when he hit the cage the chair also hit him in the head and he was out like he was legitimately um, out and um, Terry Funk went over to check on him and then kind of kind of got to him uh, he was still loopy and out of it and then he so he played it up and bought him some time so he could recover when he got in Undertaker's face. And um, and then they just went through and finished the match. But the fact that he finished that match was is crazy. Yeah, I saw, I saw the pay-per-view for that um, too. And 
I mean, that was crazy. It's really, really awful that that happened. And, you know, I can't imagine the, the people that were there to witness that. Uh, it's crazy. Just, um, you know, it was the harness was the the issue with that one, right? I think the harness gave way and uh, he, he just fell. That's just crazy. I mean, he was, his career could have just taken off, really taken off. Yeah, I mean, and he was a heel at the time. No, 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 wait, he wasn't a heel at that time, right? He was coming in as the Blue Blazer again. And I think, yeah, he wasn't a heel. But, um, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot to that industry that people don't get or they don't know about. It has, it has my respect. Uh, like I said, if, if somebody offered me enough money to take care of our expenses, I would do it in a heartbeat. Okay, we've got 12 minutes left on our pork. So I'm heating up the water here and make sure nothing is burning underneath, which looks like it is. Um, let's get, let me level out this broth a little bit. Really appreciate you guys sticking around and hanging out during this more uh, subdued period of the stream. Okay, we've got everything. It's just about ready. We've got 11 minutes. Um, I'm gonna need another cutting board to cut the slice the pork. I've used both of my cutting boards. Okay. Oh no, wait, I have one right here. Okay. I will use this one to slice the pork when it comes out. Our bamboo shoots are marinating. I don't know how well that's going to come out, but they're marinating. They should be okay it's sitting at room temp because it hasn't been too long. The thing with the <laughs> hardcore holly. He was, he was not happy about having a job to him. Uh, I'm sure you know, he um, he didn't want a job to Lesnar, so he was sandbagging the match, and Lesnar would just dropped him on his neck. That wasn't cool of Lesnar to do that. I think that was really unprofessional. I guess unprofessional on both ends, but you know, don't hurt a guy like that. He broke his damn neck. So you know, not cool. Um, little knife. And, you know, be professional in the ring. I've worked with guys in the kitchen that I've hated, but I wouldn't ever, um, do anything to, to, uh, screw them over in the kitchen. Because you got to be professional. Alright, water. So for the noodles, I'm going to be using the bigger pot. Uh, that's because when you cook the noodles, it releases a lot of starch. And if you don't have enough water, that starch is going to stay with the noodles when you put it into the bowls. So I've got the bigger pot of water is going to be used for the for cooking the noodles and then the smaller ones yeah that was that pedigree was awesome <laughs> i would say visually it was it was awesome but yeah that was really messed up um so this bigger pot is going to be for cooking the noodles these two smaller pots that's going to be the broth for the um for the ramen and i'm using this to put the noodles into into this Set it down into the pot, cook it, 
take it out, strain it, and then dump it into the into the ramen bowl. But this is going to be the tricky part where it gets kind of hectic. So I need to use all of my cunning for this. Okay, those two. That's broth and broth. That one's boiling over a little bit. That's interesting. Um, I would bring the camera over, but there's so much kind of going on. Yeah. All right, hot broth, hot broth. That. Move this. Okay, let's see. <laughs> well, I'm talking about wrestling too, so. But hey, you know, if you got guys got cooking questions, <laughs> let's hear them. Okay. I think I'm gonna put two packs of this in the in the um, water. Because I think three would be too much for this. Oh, I thought there was a I thought there was a spot you could split this with. Split it open. Um where'd my little knife go? Culinary questions? I have answers. But I did say, you know, wrestling, so. Look at that beautiful broth. Nice and got some oil and fat on top, just like you want in a good ramen broth. I will make some fresh ramen broth when I can get the supplies. But um, that's going to be harder to do. I haven't checked out all of the Asian markets in the area, but um, I will be on the hunt to find everything. It's been hard because there's a lot of... Um, there's a very, very evident lack of uh, ethnic, <laughs> ethnic food here. So it's it's been challenging to to um to find ingredients that I I work with a lot. Uh if you were ever given venison to use to cook with, what dish would you choose? So one thing is I have not ever had venison. Um there's areas here that do a lot of game meats and we have yet to go try it. I've not had venison before, but from what people have told me, um, it's gamey, and I just, I kind of, I would need to taste it first, um, before figuring out what I would do with it, but, um, yeah, so, game meats, I'm not familiar with at all, I've, I've had, um, Asian water buffalo is the most, I guess, I guess it's not a game meat. It's not a typical game meat anyways, but um, that's what I've, that's what I've had. I haven't had any deer or elk or, well, isn't venison deer? <laughs> I've not had any of that stuff. Read that you can substitute mirin with an equal amount of dry sherry with a little sugar. Otherwise, use sweet sherry according to a quick Google search. I'll let you know how that goes when I try it. It That seems like it would work. You're from the UK, so a lot of, a lot of your meats are gamey. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that you were from the UK. Awesome. Okay, I'm just going to taste these to see if um, 
Where is my tasting dish? I put it away. I put it in the sink. How is your um, how is your regulation on the food there? Um, there's a there's another another streamers, Twin Vaders. They're from the UK, and there are a couple guys that I watch a lot, and um, they've always they do a lot of cooking streams, uh, IRL streams, so they'll go out to pubs and stuff like that. Uh, those guys are really cool, and I've asked them a lot about that. Um, um, oh, five, about five thirty. Ooh. Um, they've, uh, I don't mean they've showed me like their eggs, and the yolks are always that really nice, dark, rich color that I've always wanted in our eggs. Yeah, that's a good show you. Okay, let's kind of help it out. Let's try to balance it out a little bit. <clears throat> All right, that's a. As far as show you broth goes, that's really good, and that's a really good um. <clears throat> it's a really good um, brand that I've been using for a good while now. <coughs> Sorry. A little bit of show you. Uh, I think regulation with foods, some are good, some are bad. I, I think that um, putting putting a lot of unnatural ingredients <clears throat> into foods is bad. Okay. So now we turn this to vent. <laughs> Scared the hell out of me. <laughs> um. <clears throat> Simple marinade seasoning I default to for meats, game or not. <clears throat> Wish there were more Asian markets around here. I have to drive two hours to the closest one near me. Um. It kind of depends on your flavor, what you like. That's kind of what I will, I would always suggest as far as marinades and things like that. Like for me personally, I use a lot of paprika, garlic, onions. Um, those are kind of the flavors that I use a lot uh, if I'm not doing like Asian kind of marinades. Asian marinades, you, you can always go to soy sauce, garlic oyster sauce and um, <clears throat> and if you want to spice it up a little bit add a little sambal uh, chili paste to that and just kind of taste it a little sugar if it gets too spicy or it gets too salty uh, you could thin it out a little bit and then that is kind of one of my um, kind of go-to for Asian flavors if it's not Asian I'll go to a lot of paprika uh, cumin uh, you could throw in some herbs in there like oregano, basil, thyme. Um, it, it really depends on what you personally like to use, what flavors you like. Uh, just kind of play around with that. You have your base, like bare base um, flavors. And you just kind of work around that, but... Um, Yeah, it's, yeah, smoked paprika is what I like to use. I'll have smoked paprika and then sweet paprika and regular paprika. 
<laughs> Paprikas are crazy. But, um, yeah, it's... <clears throat> See, I don't use a lot of Worcestershire. Um, not often because, um, well, sometimes I just forget that I have it there. Okay, so we're going to let this vent. Um, I don't want to put the noodles in too soon. The broth, I'm going to get that into the bowls. And hmm, how am I going to, how am I going to plate this? It smells awesome in here right now, just so you guys know. I could smell the char siu is, the flavors coming out of this instant pot is really amazing right now. Okay, so I need to clear some space so that I can, um, oh, I got to turn the eggs. Okay, turn the eggs. Don't trip over the wire. These are, huh, has the front stopped working? Interesting. Can you smell it? <laughs> Wife bot came down to let me know that she can smell the <laughs> smell the char siu. Um, here is the eggs right now. We got four of them. Only gonna use two of them for the dish, and um, I should get my other knife to cut this. Uh, a good way to cut it clean is the trick where you use fishing line. Just run it across and it'll cut clean. You just gotta be gentle with it when you're doing that. My fishing gear is in the garage. I'm not gonna do that. But we've got our eggs right here. Got So as you can see, my cutting board is on a box because this is our dining room table and there's not a lot of counter space in this kitchen. So kind of having to improvise a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to let this kind of, it should be good to open. Um, I'm kind of afraid that it's going to run all over the place if I put it on this. So, oh, well, we still have this plate. So what we can do, I'm going to take it and let it cool down a little bit on this plate. And I'll show you guys um, what it looks like. I like that the Instant Pot makes some sounds like that. We got all kinds of ramen related stuff all over the place right now. Well, let's see if it's even uh, it's even soft enough, tender. Yep, that's good. I'm gonna take it out and show it to you guys because I would, if I did have my second camera set up, I would um, I would have it over here, but I don't have that set up. I'm gonna need to. Ooh, I almost lost it. That would have really sucked. Okay, I'm gonna turn the instant pot off. So, our little char siu has turned into this tiny little thing now. And what I'm gonna do, so I don't have as tight of a uh, roll on it as I had liked, but um, I'm gonna let this cool down a little bit, and it smells really good. There's not a lot of juice on there, so I might just be able to put it on the cutting board and be fine. I'll have it sitting right here just in case, so I'm gonna, like a surgeon, just gonna go in here and start cutting the twine. For some reason that came off. 
<laughs> All right, that works. I don't know why that happened, but I'll take it. So this is a smaller cut than we had last time. As we had the one I made last time got um we had a lot left over and I didn't like the way it tasted but hopefully this one is going to come out better. It's all kind of unraveling which I don't understand but it's it smells awesome I'll tell you that okay I think we're at the end here oh that's not what I wanted but I didn't want it to unroll but you know what this is the second time I've done this and we'll just work with it. Okay. So I'm going to let this rest for a little bit. When you let it rest, it's going to... The juices and the meat are going to redistribute. I mean... Okay, so... For those that don't know, when you cook a meat all the juices start to flow throughout the meat and that's why once you cook a piece of meat any kind of meat once you cook it if you were to cut it immediately that's why you see all that that juice run out of the meat it's because right now it's hot and it's just flowing freely throughout the meat when you let it rest that meat is going to it's going to sit back and it's not going to run loose and free like it was when it was hot. If you were to cut this, if I were to cut this right now and the juice started running out, I'd end up with a dry piece of meat. So it's always a good idea if you want to have your meat to come out really nice and juicy. Once it's finished cooking, let it sit and rest. It also is going to cook a little bit more. It's carryover cooking is what it's called. It's going to cook for another about 5 degrees or so. So you, when you do that, you want, you want to kind of cook it a little bit under and let that carry over cooking finish the cooking for you. So this, we're going to let that sit. And I'm going to slice it at the end when we get everything together. So it's going to be a little crazy right now. I'm going to... Let's see... How long do it says to cook these? Um, what, uh, three minutes. Okay. Um, wife bought. This is gonna go quick. So, if you want to come down and clear a little space for dinner, um, I'm gonna put it together, and then, cause I can't leave the kitchen, cause I'm tethered um, if you want to come down and get clear some space so that we can eat I'm gonna make the bowl and then hand it off to you so we can have dinner um, uh, let's see alphabet city what's going on man Okay, wife bot is coming downstairs. Let's get this going. So I've got three packs of ramen. That's gonna be for one bowl. And it's a lot of, I mean, it's, it is a good healthy portion of ramen. I mean, look at that. That's, that's a good amount of ramen. So I'm gonna open these. It says to cook them for three minutes. The thing about fresh ramen is the cooking time will really determine how the noodles come out um, so I'm gonna drop this all in at the same time 
and get that going. My noodles are over there. I mean, my chopsticks are over there. Okay, and just gonna cook these. I needed I needed a little bit more water in this to bring it up higher. It's probably been boiling it down so much that's why it's dropped in uh, level, but. I'm just going to lay it down here a little bit, make it still scoopable. Yeah, that'll work. And these two are good and hot, so I'm going to turn that off. Ah, oh, I forgot green onions. Yeah. All right, um, let's see. Okay, cutting the char siu I'm going to do last because my hands are going to be a mess after that. Okay. Oh, now everything's bubbling. So it gets the these noodles are really starchy, so you gotta gotta make sure that you have enough water to kind of pull that starch out and not leave a, a gooey mess. Because the water level was a little low, running into a little bit of issue with that, but I'm trying to get that all separated and make it so it's gonna be a nice bowl of ramen still it's starting to separate now and be good yeah all right that's gonna work you guys are really patient thanks a lot for hanging out this whole time it's i know it's a long stream okay noodles are ready i'm gonna give that a sit right there I'm gonna just fill up the bowl with some of our broth And traditionally what a lot of ramen shops do is they'll dip the bowl in hot water and let it sit to warm up the bowl and then when it's ready to serve they'll dump out the the water and pour the broth in but I don't have the space to do that so we're just doing it this way all right this should be okay. Okay, I'm gonna move this over real quick because here's an important part of ramen. There's our broth right there in the bowl. Oop. So unprofessional. All right, got our ramen. Shake it off, get that extra water out of there. Okay, now I'm gonna plop this in. All right, that's a lot of ramen, isn't it? 
and that's good. So I'm taking the ramen and laying it across like that. Pick it up like this, lay it straight over like that. So now you've got this nice flat section on the ramen. Okay, so I'm going to take that out. Take that out of frame. Okay, now we've got our char siu. I hope you guys can see that. I know it's getting a little... Oh, I got the eggs. Eggs are right there. I need my knife. Where's my knife? Okay, char siu. Actually, we'll do the egg first and then the char siu. Ooh. Okay, egg. I take one of these eggs, which have been marinating for not that long, but I mean, they've got this beautiful color on them. So, slow, nice, even cut. Look at that. Beautiful yolk right there, still good and runny. Just going to lay that in there. Okay. Should wipe this. I should have got some green onions to garnish this with. Okay, now a little bit of char siu. So I'm going to trim off this little bit here. It helps when this is cool to um, slice, which is why typically this will be cooled down overnight and then sliced. And this is going to be looser because it's still hot. But we're going we're gonna to use it. All right. Oop. Okay, I'm going to take these three slices here. Did I have three? Yeah. Three slices there. I might as well slice three more. While I'm at it. Oops. All right, that's not going to work. Well, let's just slice this part as best as we can. Okay, that'll be that one. Okay. I don't know if you guys can see this bowl. Alright, so I've got the ramen right there. Look at those beautiful yolks. Okay, and then if I had green onions, I would set that in there. Get some nori. And then I'm going to grab some of these. Hopefully they're marinated long enough. Bamboo shoots. And hopefully they taste all right for what they are. Okay, so there we go. I mean, I put some uh, green onions right here in the middle, but there's our little bowl of ramen uh, right there. Um, so that one is going to wife bot right now. I'm going to wash my hands. If 
fried spam. <laughs> okay, this is going to wife bot. Be careful, it's super hot, but there's a little bottom lippy thing. Ugh. You got it? Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, so real quick, guys, let me get this, my bowl going. Uh, and the, so the one thing is with this leftover, um, braising liquid from the from the char siu pork you can actually drain that um, I mean strain it and use that for the eggs as well so you don't have to make a separate one okay um, you can use the same liquid braising liquid for um, Same braising liquid as you did with the the uh, pork, you can use it for the eggs. And it'll actually have a lot more flavor because you have the pork in there now too. Okay, let's see. Hmm? Is it? Let me know how the bamboo shoots are. I don't know how those will come out, but hopefully came out all right. All right, here's my noodles. Oop, I need more chopsticks. Are they? Uh, well, that's good to hear. So the water level in the pot dropped dramatically, so I'm just going to cook the noodles loose in here. And um, then when it's time to scoop them up, I'll just go ahead and drop them into the little basket. But I'm shaking them around because I don't want them to stick together. Um, for mine, I'm going to add a little, I have a little ginger, pickled ginger, that I'm going to throw over the top. See, I haven't had a lot of spam in my life. It's not something that I've eaten a lot of. But when I did have the chance to eat it, I, um, I embraced it. <laughs> Look at me and my little ramen shop in here. So I've got a little uh, just pickled ginger I'm going to put in mine because I like the taste of that. Mm. One thin slice of uh, Spam. First time you had Spam was in Hong Kong? <laughs> That's kind of random. I, I would have never thought of Hong Kong as being <laughs> worse. Um, well, I mean, of all the things, 
it would be spam. <laughs> All right, so the noodles, got 30 seconds on the noodles. I'm gonna take them into this basket. So, note to self, going to need a bigger pot. <laughs> and this is the biggest pot that we've... No, no, we have a bigger pot, but... Oops. My chopsticks... Chopstick skills are failing me at the moment. So sad. That's my, that's my boy Mittens. Okay, I'm gonna dump this in and then I will lay it out. Uh, my wrist. Okay, I need a little more broth in mine. I know this is all awkward <laughs> right now. Okay, so same deal. I'm gonna bring this over real quick. Um, Spam and egg ramen over there. Just a reminder, I am British, so yeah, it's a little weird. That was the first time I had spam. <laughs> no problem. All right, so same deal. I'm going to take this ramen, the noodles, fold it over like that. And I think I honestly don't know if I'm doing this properly. If I'm supposed to be trying to get all of the ramen like that, all of the noodles, just ruined it there. All right, I'm take my spam. I would, um, I've never had spam, what is it, spam masubi? I've never had that, or have I? I don't know. Take the taking the marinated bamboo shoots. Nice little pile. I'm gonna take the char siu. Just gonna take all of this here. Just like that. Uh, take the eggs. That is a beautiful egg right there. Look at that. Okay, and then last thing I'm going to do for this is grab some of this, ah, my, this is not easy to open because on account of my wrist, um, uh, I got it, <laughs> oh God, that hurt. Now, just going to add a little bit over the top here. Oh, chopsticks failing me. Really wish I had some green onions to put in here, but 
I didn't think about that when I was uh, shopping for this. Okay. Pho is awesome, and I'm gonna try to make pho one of these days from scratch. Now that I got this Instapot, I'm probably gonna use that to um, put one together someday. Hopefully someday soon. So, all right, that's right there. That's our little bowl of ramen right there, guys. Um, I really appreciate you guys hanging out this it was a long stream, I know, and I really appreciate it. i try a little bit of this char siu. Hmm. It's pretty good. I think if I let it sit in the braising liquid overnight so it could cool down, it will pick up a lot more of those flavors, but that's... That's a pretty good char siu. I'm happy with that. But thank you so much, you guys. Um, I really appreciate it. It's been a long stream. I know that. But I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and WifeBot. And um, next stream is going to be on Friday. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Check me out. If you guys don't know who I am, check me out on you can check me out on Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, YouTube. I've got a bunch of videos on YouTube. Um, I really appreciate it, the support. Just hanging out with me. I mean, three hours, you guys have been hanging out with me. That's really awesome. I really appreciate it. And um, I'm going to be back, and uh, we got some more stuff coming up this week. And then we'll see what I come up with next week. But um, you guys have been awesome. Death. Thank you so much for the raid. Um, the name that I can't pronounce, thank you for the raid. Uh, Jedi, thank you for the raid. Thank you for the subs. Buff, this one's for you. Wait. <laughs> thank you for the sub. Um, you know, everybody that was been hanging out, I really appreciate it. Um, Warren Drake, thank you so much, man. It's been awesome hanging out with you guys. I really appreciate it. You guys have made this night really awesome. I appreciate it. I can't say that enough. I really do appreciate your guys' support. It means a lot to me. Thank you so much. Um, IT crowd, we should do like an IT crowd gang or something like that here on Twitch. Um... um yeah, you guys have been awesome. So thank you so much. I know it's been a long stream and it really means a lot to me that you guys stuck it out, stuck it out with me all this three hours. I appreciate it. And um, I'll see you guys next time. If Between here and then, I'll be on Instagram, tw uh, Twitter, and all that stuff. So catch me there. I'll see you next time. And as I say, with every body, every stream, every YouTube video, remember... Kitchen confidence starts with you. You guys have a great night. Buff, have a great day. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Thanks.